Hey everybody, it's Exonerated here on the Spinal Craft server. Just thought I'd take a chance now to look around. Um, we're in episode 10. Let me take down the brightings, brightness rather, a little bit more. I don't want the sun to overwhelm us. Oh, not what I want. And we'll just go with it for now, and I'll control it other ways. So, um, wanted to kind of show some of the changes to the base with the shaders on. Um, of course, either side of the claw here, we have these doorways now uh, with the water rerouted so that you can travel back and forth without any kind of issues. Whoops. I keep forgetting. I use control to run, and I keep forgetting that it's set up to... Uh, zoom in and then of course the other doorway we've got the garden here that we that we built a few episodes back um and all the lighting the waterway here wow the water looks amazing let's get the sun glare out and the water going down some of the light adjusting i'm gonna kind of keep the sun at our back so it doesn't bother us this time like it did the last time that i used shaders um, so, everything's looking good. I love the way all this light work came out. In 1.8, I'll be able to swap out some of the stone brick for mossy stone brick. And I think it's going to add a lot to this build over here as far as uh, kind of kicking things up to just mesh in together as one piece. So, let's go check out underneath here our storage room. I'll go look at more above ground, but I want to do it at night. Um, so storage room, everything's pretty much the same. There's not a whole lot of change with the lighting. A lot of glowstone, um, but not too terribly bad. Let's go down here. We're going to go take a look at our most recent, one of our most recent projects anyway. And that's the farm with the, or the rather the base of the gold farm where we've been working. Last time I was here, two episodes ago, I did a lot of work excavating. And, uh, wow, this looks great. Oh, bright light up there with the sun. This looks great in the shaders, the glass. Um, I like this look better, where it's foggier versus this, where you almost can't see straight through it. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Uh, one of the things I hadn't shown you guys is I went through and set up two sorting sides. This right here is um, the rotten flesh, rather, and this over here is the gold, and it's just feeding in gold as it sees fit. I forgot to unlock this chest, that's why. This one's half full, but it goes through, fills up the bottom, fills all the way up, moves over, fills all the way up, moves over, fills all the way up, so on and so forth. Same with the rotten flesh. I took down the towers of rotten flesh that I had, and I lost quite a bit of it. Um, on purpose, because I've got so much rotten flesh already laying around the base in different areas that it was just silly to kind of keep it. I did keep a few chests of it. This chest is going to be my overflow chest. When it starts landing in here, I'll start throwing it away, and I'll have some sort of destroy mechanism set up for that. Uh, but I have these two rows right here, and then I have a row and a half over here, I believe. Am I up to two? No, yeah, not quite two rows of flesh there. I built another tunnel off of this, and I don't know if I showed this or not, so I'm going to show it now. This is going back towards the... Oops. We'll double tap then. Uh, towards the slime farm. This is another rail that's going to kind of connect the two together. Um, and eventually, I'll have a rail leaving from the slime farm over to the storage area. I think I want to include a lot more of those um, kind of little secret passage sort of deals back and forth so I can quickly get back. But there's, of course, the slime farm. Haven't done a whole lot on that. Um, haven't needed to. Got quite a bit of slime stored up for 1.8. Uh, let's see, what else have we done? We've got our storage over here for the wool, which I still haven't done an exterior on, but that's coming up. And our glass elevator, of course, with the uh, 
items. It catches the items and runs them into the sorting array. And this is pretty much as far as I've gotten with that. Let's go ahead and check out our sugarcane farm. We had no exterior on this yet. Okay. And the sun setting off. Sugarcane farm looking good. I love the little glow of the lava source down in the middle there. Um, I just love. I don't. I don't know. I just enjoy it. Drop down. Drop down some more. And uh, let's go around over towards the ice farm and the tiers, the new tiers that we set up. And we can see some of the grounds that we've leveled off. Um, this, of course, is a little entryway across from the claw. Here we go. And the recess beacon, along with some of the grounds. And that water looks good. And Tyrant has started working on some pathing, so he's going to carry some pathing across for the exterior and he's going to match up the building. He's we've cleared all this out. I've shown all this before. And when he does the exterior of the wheat building, um he wants to kind of do a universal pathing deal. So that's why this is like this. This is the same sort of pathing we have set up on the other side running into the base. And then of course we've got all of these tiers lit up all the way up. I need to get more lighting up. For these uh, again this episode isn't going to be really long just kind of taking a look at, at how everything's doing with with the uh, shaders and how the base is coming along the idea is to have like one unified appearance through everything and I, I think we're doing a really good job of that um, I did come up here and kind of start a broken path um, with different stones and whatnot to work up to go towards where I'm going to have some buildings up here for our later project. And then of course we got we've got that massive block of ice that uh yeah. Wow, when you punch it your arm almost disappears behind it. That's kind of cool. So, um haven't had a whole lot of uh, other projects going on. Um some things coming down the pipe uh up here. I want to do several buildings, and I am toying with the idea of doing an island over here, um, above all of this. It would purely be aesthetics. It would just be for looks. Um, but I think it could add a lot to the build if I did that. Having a couple of huts up on the top as well, um, sort of... You know, like you go into, uh, or you see in movies all the time, the Mongolian uh, mountains and all that. And they've got these old Asian-themed building huts and stuff. I, I want to put some of those up there. I think they would go out really well. And I might have to solicit some help for those, because that's not really a build style I'm comfortable with. But we'll see. Um, over here, we have plans for a new tree farm. Um, the the tree farm is going to be for looks. It's not actually going to be functioning. Um, this tree farm right here does oak. I am in the process in a creative world of building one that may work for birch. And if it works for birch, then this tree farm will suddenly get a second floor. And we'll do birch out of here as well as oak, which will be really nice. Uh, but then we'll have, like I said, a tree farm over here for aesthetics. We'll push back a little bit into the mountains to lay everything out. And Tyrant's got some special plans for that tree farm. Um, he still hasn't done the facade here, but he hasn't had a lot of time. Both of us have been sort of busy with work. And uh, the other thing I wanted to do was start routing all farms to go towards the storage room here. Uh, the exception being the gold farm, uh, but the rest of them, the slime farm that's over there, the sheep farm, will probably stay where it is, so will the sugar cane. 
Um, but I want to be able to stockpile wood, so I would like for stuff to come from over here, probably via ice channel, underneath, and over here into the storage room. Oh, I went through... I don't get very good numbers on it, but I did go through and, and build a chicken cooker. Uh, I eat a lot of meat with all of the beacons around here. I do nothing but run. Wow, that's bright. And uh, when I'm running, I even with the sprint beacon, I, I burn through meat like crazy. Stacks upon stacks. And I've actually gotten to a point where I can't keep up. So I built that uh, not long ago, and it just it's just gotten started now so that I can at least stockpile some chicken and hopefully have something to eat. Uh, forget who gave me the cake, but I got a cake. And let's see if we've done anything else. I don't think we have. Show some of these other scenes at night. The cow farm right there. We just had a creeper spawn right there. That's crazy. This is the cow farm that can't keep up. Even with a looting three sword. So I started doing a pig farm too. In fact, I probably should feed them. Come on, guys. Oink, oink, oink. Alright. Everybody's all fed. Belly's all full. We get out of there. And move on. Um, have to go through and finish the other side of these iron farms. That far side over there is finished. You can see all three tiers. I just need to add them all here. And I started building those, but I haven't progressed further. We've got a really special project for this area of the map. This is something that Tyrant just started working on. All of this land will have to be backfilled in. Um, and these mountains will have to come down. They'll have to come down to maybe down there, maybe 10 blocks lower than where we are right now. They'll have to come down. Um, this project is strictly for Dynamap, which Dynamap is a plug-in where we um, shows a, a image of the map that we're on. It's a plug-in that the server uh, owner put on. And it's really great because you can see your relation to everybody else, but at the same end, it, it affords you some other opportunities, uh, one of them being that we want to do this creation that could specific, excuse me, specifically be seen from Dynamap, um, something super standout-ish like. So uh, that I'm hoping we get a chance to work on this week and get that finished because he spent a lot of time designing it, and it's also a working farm not only is it amazing to look at but it's a working farm well I guess a series of working farms uh, 10 total each of them being this big in size so that's gonna be really great when we can get that going and let me duck on down see how the any day now there we go see how the cactus farm is doing Wow Cactus Farm has been a busy. Let's see here. I think this is all full. We're up to these six chests are full, so I guess we're starting this row. That, uh. I should start selling cactus at this rate. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it all. Way more cactus than I reasonably need. But that's the idea when it comes to blocks. I spend a lot of time on the server selling blocks to people um, for diamonds. Um, I, my logic is I spent the time building the farm and going to all the trouble to, to get the materials. A lot of times these farms are very costly in redstone and iron and, and everything else. So um, I save others the trouble by selling it to them for diamonds, which is great. Um... And so I always want to have stuff on hand, which is what I'm doing there. Uh, plenty of cactus. So uh, I don't think I've shown you this room yet, the smeltery room. Yep, that's pretty uneventful. This this right side here is automated. 
Um, the other two sides, the middle and this left side, they're not automated. Um, I could put items in this top chest here and they'll filter into these chests. The product drops out on this other side where the door is. I could combine everything and have it drop right here. I just don't like it like that. I wanted it to be more concealed and so I did it that way. Uh, we've added some water in on the sides. We've also taken down in this room, we've taken down the side paths. The side paths, um, we decided we don't need loot up, or loot. We don't need chest up that high. We're just going to keep the chest down low. And if we have to go through and add another layer on the sides, we'll start at the top on the outside here and work our way across a few. But I really don't think we're going to need it. There's tons of space for items in the game. Uh, in here and, and we have multiple spaces for everything so and this this iron I just got done doing this iron today yeah that is a double chest of iron blocks yes this is the start of a second one um, so that when you get that many iron farms going I have nine tiers going right now and I'm about to have three more going it's pretty uh, spectacular when it comes to the amount of iron that it produces, it's unbelievable. So, that pretty much concludes the tour. Um, not a whole lot new design-wise. Um, we still have a lot of things on the horizon, but I did want to take the tour with the shaders on to show you everything. And I misspoke earlier, I'm sorry, this is episode 9, not episode 10, so. Let me drop down while I'm thinking about it and check out these mushrooms here. I believe I'm going to have to change the way... Yep, they did not grow. Okay, alright, well, I'll have to start working out the details of another mushroom farm, something that... They will grow in, because they will not grow in this one. The good thing is that I have plenty of room back there to actually grow stuff in. So, I mean, I can gut up into the hill at least a little bit. This side, not so much. We have this stairway in the middle that goes up and goes over. So we kind of hit a point where we, where we don't have room to go over or to go under. So we might have to take one of them down. Might take them both down. We got plenty of room to do that as well. And oh, the other thing for those folks who use this chicken farm design, where the uh, the chickens rest on top and then they come down. One of the things I found is that a lot of folks will put that lever, and of course it breaks more blocks than I want. A lot of folks will put that lever right here. What I have found is that with the glass being right here. The hopper doesn't always get a hold of the items quickly because that lever is here. And a lot of folks, the design I've seen has a lever right here. I blocked that in, and instantly I stopped finding loose chicken and, and leather or uh, feathers laying on the ground. The, le the lever is still on the same block. It's just on this side, and I boxed in this glass. When I did that, I stopped having loose items, and that's when I actually started generating cooked meat. So for those of you who had this design of this chicken cooker, and it's it's pretty standard. Let me get up. Let me get up here. Actually, I'll do it this way. Um, you know, pretty standard design. You got your hatch here, and you've got some chickens underneath laying eggs, and they go inside. They drop into the eggs. Drop into this uh, dispenser here. This clock automatically fires them out. Move that switch and block in the front. You'll get better rates, and you won't be running by every five minutes picking up chicken and feathers. I hate that. Been doing a little bit of fishing. Um, I do have some books. Um, I have a bow, which is pretty stoked. Uh, unbreaking, power three, punch one. Got a name tag, some clownfish, feather falling four. Woo! I don't even need it, but I want it. And then punch one, which is not so big, but the protection three on a book is kind of nice. Oh, and then plenty of puffer fish, which apparently 
all need to be ha named Mr. Happy Fish. That's a, like an ongoing server thing. So, uh, beyond that, don't really have anything else going on. Just wanted to give you guys a guided tour with the shaders on. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll record with the shaders on. So you can kind of see the changes, not just in that classic Minecraft sense, but actually be able to appreciate. I think the, the shaders do a better job of it, showcasing things um, than just running it in normal, flat Minecraft. So... Uh, that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and until next time, talk to you later. Bye-bye.